right, today's video, somebody reached out to us via IG and said, what are the secrets to making better cold calls in tech sales? So I'll go ahead and give you a few today. The first biggest secret is that if you don't know how to cold call effectively, you're at the wrong company and you need to call us so that we can help you put you in the right company. There is only like the amount of content that is getting an insane amount of views in this racket of tech sales has to do with cold calling. And I'm of the firm believer, having been in this racket for a while, if you don't know how to make a cold call, number one, you may or may not have had the training or you're at a new company and the, the, the sales manager that you are equipped with is not providing you with the right guidance. If you don't know how to fire off a cold call, I'm gonna tell you this, that is the clearest big, that is the clearest red flag to me that this is not for long. <clears throat> You're in an NFL situation where um, no matter how many YouTube videos you go ahead and consume, the truth of the matter is if you're struggling making cold calls, that's most likely a toxic work environment. You are also struggling with various aspects of this job. So if you're struggling right now with making cold calls, whether you have the training or not, you need to go ahead and call us because you're not at the right company and it is only wearing you and wearing you down uh, emotionally, and it's not going to be affect. It's not helping you in terms of like a job hunt, especially in this market. Uh, this is a problem that we need to go ahead and get squared away. The second biggest secret that I can go ahead and tell you about making better cold calls is I don't know what tech sales racket that you're in, but I'm going to give you a hack because every product is different and every company is different. Make a list of your top ten to twenty biggest competitors, drop your information in there, and have them come and call and pitch you. And you're gonna notice a few things. You're gonna notice that about 80% of the competition sounds very similar, and you've gotten no value, and you are probably very turned off, and you're probably just thinking, just put yourself in the, in the eyes of the consumer, in the shoes of the consumer, right? And you're thinking to yourself like, whoa, I wouldn't buy that shit with my own money <laughs> or like I wouldn't even talk to that person. But there's going to be the 10 to 20 percent of the people that do call you that you're going to find that their pitch is extremely impressive. I want you to go ahead and actually compare that with what you guys got going on right now. This is a hack. This is a secret that none of the top producers will ever come out and admit that they're doing to get ahead of the competition. But if you go to any restaurant, especially small restaurants, and in a city like I spent a lot of time in New York or in LA, and you ask the people how have they survived, because we want to think smart. We want to work smarter, not harder. They always go to other restaurants that are in their space, either in their neighborhood, in other neighborhoods, um, and they draw inspiration, just like how I watch other YouTube channels, and draw inspiration, what are they doing differently compared to what is it that I'm doing? And looking at it the outside, if I had a choice to go to this pizza shop versus my pizza shop, would I choose that other one or would I choose mine? If I had a choice to go ahead and watch this movie versus my movie, actors do this too, who would I choose, right? You have to be very honest with yourself about whether or not you would buy from you. <laughs> that is the truth. Would you buy you? <laughs> if you don't even believe, and, and that you also have to see how well you stack up to the competition. Sometimes you might think in your company you are the best person on your team. And assuming you're correct, let's just say that you are. That doesn't mean shit to the customer because they're getting hit up by the entire competition. They could be, and tech is global. There's no geographical boundaries. Uh, you know, Take a look at companies that we built out here in the US. Do you think HubSpot only operates in the US? You think Atlassian only operates in Australia? A lot of people don't even know this. They're originally an Australian company. Uh, you think like companies just like, no. If you're like a tech company in the UK, you're competing against, it's practically the same, it's the same language, right? 
they're competing against all the other U.S. Comp tech companies that are trying to take their territory. So schedule some of these calls. Find out how you match up. Because even uh, in, in your sales cycle, I don't know which particular vertical that you're in, but your decision time could be three months to close. It could be six months. It could be nine months. It could be one year. Sometimes I've heard of deals that have gone on longer and you have to keep nurturing your funnel, right? This is the other secret that kind of bleeds into next. Nobody's going to make a decision on the first call. So stop stressing yourself out thinking that, you know, a no doesn't mean get lost forever. You can still continue to go ahead and nurture that relationship as you should. Because even if they're bought into you, they need other people bought in as well. And they also need time to go ahead and implement. It's either one of two things that are going to happen. You're either offering a tech product, a software, uh, a software product that is replacing an existing software product that they already have, or they've never used this. They don't have a CRM or they don't have the cybersecurity product. And now they got to implement it. Either way, once they send over the cash, it's not over yet. They still need to onboard and implement and integrate that product. The worst thing is if they have to replace it and they got to migrate data over, they still have to go ahead and go through an onboarding period before they can go out there and reap the full benefits of whatever product you are selling and promoting out there. So by scheduling calls with other people that are in your space, you can see what types of follow-up campaigns that they have. You can see what types of email campaigns that they have. You can see how they're nurturing their customer. And this just goes back into like, I would say the last tip of the day that I'll have for you. Most people don't have a good sales manager. And if that's the case, you need to call us right now so we can get you out of that hostage situation. But you can spend the next 90 to 100 days reading all of these different books and watching all of these different YouTube videos and I appreciate the views. But at the end of the day, let's be honest, 90 days from now, you might just be as curious as you are right now. It's not like you do this for 90 days and you're gonna definitely get a clear answer at the end of the rainbow. You might not have an answer 90 days later. You might just be as lost as you are now or worse, you might even be more lost than you are right now. It's easier for you to take something that already works and to see how it is that you can go ahead and innovate it versus creating something from scratch. This right now, we're not just talking about sales, we are talking about success. One of the clearest and most proven success strategies is modeling. Taking something that already works and making it better versus then trying to create something from scratch. This is hence the, the, the philosophy behind the saying, don't reinvent the wheel. The other thing that I also want you to go out there and be very cognizant of, if I was to give out one more secret is this. Whatever works, it doesn't work forever. Sometimes the restaurants that we went to when we were kids, they were great, but they just suck now. The pitches that you used last year, you know, sales and marketing, it's cyclical. It works and it's like, it's working so well and then it stops working. And then you know what? Six months to a year later, you might just go back into the closet and pull it out from the shelf and you'll see it working again. <laughs> this is why you wanna have everything documented very well, have a good documentation system. <laughs> Another tip. Um, so you wanna go ahead and see because, hey, if you notice that your competition out there is like, they're all saying something about AI, they're all doing this. I'm seeing a lot of, there was a time when I noticed every type of product out there, they were talking about GDPR, 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 GDPR. There's some other tech companies out there that didn't mention anything about them. Um, that's a problem. This is actually how you stay ahead of the competition because your customer is also going to be asking you, well, we were actually thinking about close.io. I get it. And I understand why you would like close.io because they have this feature, right? Exactly. It seems pretty cool. It doesn't seem like anybody has it yet. It is pretty cool, except it doesn't work. You need to know your competition as well. And this is a lot of work to do, but you have to make a commitment that if you're gonna be great at anything, why would you do anything for a full-time job if you're not gonna to commit to being great at it? You need to know your competition. 
uh, and you really need to put yourself in this uh, mindset that you're the best. And if you're the best, you should know what's going on with the rest of the market that's in your space that's going to try to take away your lunch because you don't want to go ahead and do all that work. Eventually, you will be doing more than just setting appointments and nurturing. You would be closing, hopefully managing, moving to bigger and better. You might as well start acting like it now. Uh, you don't want somebody to come in at the very end of it because you want to know what happens sometimes in tech sales is that you sold the company on using a product that they don't have. And they have to go through this entire mental journey of thinking to themselves, do we really need this? Do we really? Okay, we really need this. But since Jerry has kept up with us this entire time, I think it's a good idea that if we went with anybody, we went with Jerry. And then somebody comes in at the very last minute and completely swoops that deal off of you because now they've committed to onboarding this type of product, but somebody else is like, great. Here's what, here's what we do differently. And they did their homework and they take your lunch away. Stop wasting time trying to figure this out on your own schedule call with us. Whatever it is, um, there's only so much information you can aggregate from watching YouTube. Of course, we appreciate the views. Uh, ultimately, what you really need to stay ahead of the competition is to be a part of a very active tech sales community because that's where the best intelligence is being traded in this field. Talk to you soon.